This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10. This is the 493rd edition of this series, a series where I rank cards based on their historical performance and Magic's highest level of competition. Before we jump into this video, I do want to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoy my content and you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you did. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the most popular creature types around. Ninjas. I've done a lot of creature types at this point, and I'm pretty sure that ninjas are the most popular creature type that I haven't done yet. Although slivers might be in that conversation too. The ninja creature type made its debut back in the original Kamigawa block, and it has also returned a few times since then, in Commander 2018, in Modern Horizons, and also in our recent return to Kamigawa earlier this year in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. It took me almost 500 MTG Top 10s to take a look at them because there really weren't enough of them up until recently, thanks to Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Now, there's plenty of ninjas with points. To be eligible for this video, a card had to either have the ninja creature type or be capable of making a ninja creature token. In all, there were 48 cards eligible, and in this video, we'll take a look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours and Set Championships. And a second tier top 8 is worth 1 point, this includes events like Magic Online Challenges and Grand Prix. Alright, let's get to the list. At number 10, it is Fallen Shinobi. Many ninjas come with the Ninjutsu mechanic, which I think is one of the coolest and most flavorful mechanics we've ever seen. It lets you pay a mana cost and put a ninja onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, but you can only use it if you have a creature that went unblocked, and you return that creature to your hand when you place your ninja on the battlefield tapped and attacking. Most ninjas with ninjutsu also have a trigger of some sort for when they do combat damage to a player, so it ends up being a pretty big deal that you can slip one in out of nowhere. In the case of the shinobi, it lets you exile the top two cards of your opponent's library, and you can play one of those without paying any mana costs. That's obviously an amazing deal, as he nets you a free card every single time he hits your opponent. The ninja was printed in Modern Horizons, so it has never been legal in Standard and the like. It has gained points in Legacy and Modern, though, where it's been featured in some ninja tribal decks. However, it hasn't gained any points since 2020, and it may not be on this list much longer. At number 9, it is Katosi, the Silent Spider. She's the only ninja on the list without ninjutsu. Instead, she has a very wordy Enter the Battlefield ability. She gets to exile a non-basic land card from the opponent's graveyard, and then rip every copy of that card out of the graveyard hand and library of your opponent. And as long as Katose sticks around, you can actually cast one of the cards you exiled and spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. In other words, she's a two-for-one that can hate on the graveyard and really weak in some decks that are reliant on specific cards. She's largely been played as a sideboard card in Standard as she's at her best in non-aggressive matchups. She is likely to gain more points going forward. At number 8, it is Moonblade Shinobi. When this ninja does combat damage to a player, you get a 1-1 blue illusion creature token with flying. That's a pretty sweet deal, especially because, like most ninjas, the shinobi comes with ninjutsu, which allows you to increase your chances of hitting your opponent and making the token. The shinobi has gained all of its points in Popper, where it's played in a variety of blue decks like fairies and mono blue aggro. It is certainly a very powerful common, and it's likely to gain more points in that format going forward. At number 7, it is Moon Circuit Hacker, the first Neon Dynasty card we've seen on the list. The Hacker has the incredibly low ninjutsu cost of a single blue mana, and when it hits the opponent you can draw a card and discard a card, and if it came into play that turn you don't have to discard. In other words, if you ninjutsu it into play, you just straight up draw instead of looting. The Hacker, like Moonblade Shinobi, is fairly heavily played in mono blue aggro decks and popper, and it's going to keep gaining points there. The Hacker is also interesting in that it's an enchantment creature, which so far hasn't really mattered for the card outside of Limited, but it could end up coming up at some point. At number 6, it is Ingenious Infiltrator. This Modern Horizons Ninja is a pretty powerful tribal payoff for ninjas, since anytime any ninja deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. 
The way this is worded, you get to draw a card for each ninja that makes contact, unlike some versions of this effect which only let you draw one card total. It, of course, also comes with ninjutsu itself, and it counts itself with its ability. So, if you ninjutsu it in, it will be drawing you a card right away. This powerful tribal ability is a big deal, and it's one of the key cogs in Legacy Ninja decks as a result. The Infiltrator was also featured in a blue-black ninja deck that top aided a Vintage Challenge, though the deck isn't nearly as prevalent in that format, it is likely to gain more points in Legacy going forward. At number 5, it is Okiba Gang Shinobi. It's taken us quite a while to get to our first ninja from original Kamigawa block, and here it is. The Gang makes any player it deals combat damage to discard two cards, which can be pretty potent. After all, it could result in a 3 for 1. And that effect makes it well worth ninjutsuing into play. It found some success in standard aggro decks, and it's also another ninja that's right at home in Popper, where it is found in decks like Demir Control and Devotion to Black, and it's likely to keep gaining more points in Popper going forward. At number 4, it is Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni. Ink Eyes has a very powerful effect when she hits your opponent, since she can reanimate an opponent's creature. Because of ninjutsu, this is easier to accomplish than it might look, and even though you return the original attacker to your hand, you're probably getting 5 mana of value out of ninjutsuing Ink Eyes into play. And to top it all off, she can regenerate, which means even without ninjutsu, she can attack pretty much every turn and threaten to reanimate something, since it probably isn't going to be dying in combat. It gained all of its points in Kamigawa Block Constructed and the Standard of 2005, and unlike most of the other ninjas on this list, she isn't seeing play anymore these days. She just costs too much mana, especially compared to all these other ninjas you could be running. At number 3, it is Yuriko, the Tiger's Shadow. She's from Commander 2018, and has never been printed in a standard or modern legal set. She's one of the most popular and powerful commanders there is. She currently sits as the second most popular commander on all of EDH rec. And that has a pool of like 700,000 decks. But she has done some serious work outside of Commander 2, which is pretty impressive. Especially because she's only legal in the game's most powerful formats of Legacy and Vintage. She offers a super powerful ninja payoff, since anytime one of your ninjas hits your opponent, you get to draw the top card of your library and lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. This will draw you more ninjas, who will draw you more cards, and things just snowball from there. Things can get especially heinous when she combines with the number 6 card on this list, Ingenious Infiltrator, as your ninjas will build up way too much of an advantage for your opponent to overcome it. She's gained most of her points in Legacy, and she's well positioned to continue to gain points there. At number 2, it is Kaito Shizuki. This Planeswalker doesn't have the ninja type himself, but he does come with a minus 2 ability that lets you make an unblockable 1-1 ninja token. On top of that, Kaito has a plus one that lets you draw a card. It turns into a loot if you haven't attacked, but if you have, you don't have to discard the card, and because he's probably made you a 1-1 token, it's not that hard for you to attack and make sure you don't have to discard. He also comes with an ultimate emblem that allows you to search up a blue or black creature and put it onto the battlefield anytime you hit your opponent with a creature. So yeah, he isn't a ninja on the card, but he is a ninja in the lore, and he makes a ninja creature token. One thing that really powers him up is his ability to phase out the turn you play him. This means that he can't be attacked or destroyed during your opponent's turn, and that means you can usually get two loyalty abilities out of him any time you cast him, and that's a pretty nice guarantee. While he is a relatively new card, he already has multi-format success. In Standard, he's been featured in a variety of different Esper and Grixis decks all along the spectrum, from control to mid-range to aggro. Turns out he is a quality planeswalker in pretty much any deck that can cast him. He also appeared in Jim Davis's top 8 deck from the alchemy portion of the Neon Dynasty Championship. He's found significant success in Modern 2, where he's utilized in Death Shadow and Reanimator decks. Both of those decks like putting cards in the graveyard, so looting with his plus one a couple of times is pretty powerful, especially because he can then sit around and generate a bunch of additional value. Kaido looks really well positioned to keep gaining points in Standard, Modern, and maybe Alchemy, and he has a real shot at the number one slot on this list in the long run. However, he does have a bit of a ways to go before he catches our number one, which is... Ninja of the Deep Hours. This is the original ninja that drew you a card when it hits your opponent. It can net you a ton of cards if it's left unchecked. While it has gained a few points in Standard and Modern over the years, the ninja has done the most work in Popper, where it's pretty close to being a blue staple. It's gained points in Fairy Tribal decks, Blue Red Snow decks, Mono Blue Delver, Demir Control, and the so-called Deep Hours aggro. 
All of these decks really like how much value he can give you, but they also use creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities, like Spell, Stutter, Sprite, and if you ninjutsu one of those back to your hand, you end up netting two cards instead of just one. Since 2019, he's also seen significant play in the Legacy Ninja decks I've mentioned throughout this video, where it provides serious card advantage alongside Yuriko and Ingenious Infiltrator. While he is gaining points, Kaito is doing it at an even higher rate, so it will be interesting to see if in the long run, Ninja of the Deep Hours can hold on to its number one slot. So, those are the 10 ninjas that have had the biggest impact on competitive magic. If you want to own any of these powerful cards, check out the description, where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each of them. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on past videos, including many more that look at specific creature types, you should see those playlists on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.